Hi guys, this is John from Walton's TV, and this is Meatgistics. A few weeks ago, we showed you guys some tips on how you could take some of the things that commercial processors do when grinding and mixing meat and adapt them for use at home. We're continuing our effort to help you guys make the best homemade product possible, so today we have some tips for you on sausage stuffing. When a big commercial processor stuffs their product, they're going to be using a water stuffer, hydraulic stuffer, or vacuum stuffer. You're probably using a hand stuffer like this one, so some of the advantages they have are not gonna be things you can duplicate. The best thing you can do is make sure that you have as few air pockets in your canister as possible. The best way to do this is to create an angle when filling it and do it from side to side. What I mean by that is put your initial layer down and leave a slight angle from left to right or right to left, doesn't matter, and then on your next one, come back and fill that and make your angle the opposite direction and so forth and so forth till you're to the top. In between each one of these, make sure that you're packing it down in there pretty good. That's gonna force any air up out of it. Commercial processors have been stuffing for years and they have it down to basically an art form. For them, blowouts are a rarity. For a home processor though, nothing is more annoying than hearing that dreaded pop from your casing. It means backing off your piston, stuffing whatever you lost back into the canister, and fixing your casing. All of that takes time and is a major annoyance. To help you avoid this, make sure you're not holding the casing onto the tube too tightly. Now, different products require different amounts of pressure since you'd be using different casings. Some of them you want to fill up a little bit more than others, but the casing should flow fairly smoothly off of the stuffing tube. So if you're busting a lot of casings, make sure that you aren't holding it on too tightly on the stuffing tube. Also, make sure your air valve on your piston is working properly. It should have some easy movement without being too easy to push up. What this is gonna do is allow air to escape up through the canister and out this instead of out and into your casing. Another thing you can do is to clamp your stuffer base down to the table you're using. This will help prevent the rocking as you're cranking. If you're able to, I actually know some customers who've had some success removing the unit from this base and bolting it directly down to the table. Then you can crank as hard as you want and it's not going anywhere. Along the same lines, the size of the stuffer you're using is gonna matter. A seven and 11 pound stuffer have a smaller piston than the 26 and 33. So it's gonna stuff a little bit easier just because the piston is smaller and the larger the diameter of the piston, the more force it's gonna take to crank it down. As always, make sure you're lubricating everything, including the gearbox and the piston gasket inside of the canister and anything else you need with white oil really is a lifesaver. Make sure you're subscribed to Walton's TV and remember to tap the bell next to the subscribe button to get notified about all new videos, plus like and comment on this video and visit waltonsinc.com and meatgistics.com to find everything but the meat. Thanks for watching guys, I'm John with Walton's TV and I'll see you guys next time. Subscribe to Walton's TV TV to watch more YouTube videos or shop at waltonsinc.com to find everything but the meat. You can also watch more videos from Walton's TV by clicking here or clicking here.